Today we're going to talk about something that is idiomatic Django and it has to do with models. Generally when you're creating websites you're going to have a model that ties directly to a template on the website. So one of the ways to do that and so that you can see a specific model object on the website is you would use get absolute URL to tie it directly to a template so you can see that information on the website. To start, let's look at our model that we have currently that does not have getAbsoluteURL method defined. It's a task model and we're inheriting the timestamp model and the title slug description model from Django extensions so that there's very little for us to do. If we take this model that doesn't have our getAbsoluteURL and we try to use it normally and we use it inside of our views that we have here, we have a task list view, a create task view, and a detail view of task view. Then when we use our create task view like this, it's going to error out because it has no idea where to go after it creates an object in the database for us. To test this out, if we'll jump into our browser and we go to add task, we just go ahead and give a title, go a quick little description of our task, and then hit submit, we get a error that says it's our view is improperly configured because there's no URL to redirect to. So it says you need to define get absolute URL or we need to put a success URL property on our view. Another area in Django that uses get absolute URL by default is in the admin. So if we go into the admin and click on our tasks, click on one here. Over where the history button is, there's normally a view on site but if you don't have get absolute URL defined for a model, then it just doesn't even show the button. And so it makes it a little more complicated to see your current object on the website. And then finally, if we look in our template, we can see that for listing out all of our tasks, we're using the URL call and we're calling the named URL detail and we're passing it a slug of our task. This is actually fine and not really that big of a deal, but if for some reason we later change the URL of our object, we'd have to go into every single template that we define this and it changed this code. Whereas we could just do task.getAbsoluteURL and then all we have to do is change the URL of the model object and it would be changed across the site. So to define a getAbsoluteURL, we'll come into our model and then just define getAbsoluteURL and just return a reverse lookup of our URL. So we're going to do reverse and then do detail string because that's the name of our URL. And we're going to say the quarks are going to be the key of slug and the value of self.slug. And then if we look at our URL side by side, you can see it's matching up with our name to detail URL in our URLs file. So with that, let's look at this in action on the website. Start up our server and if we'll just click on one of our objects again, you'll see we have the view on site button. When we click on that, it actually takes us to that object. If we'll go back, do another one, again, it takes us to that object on the website directly. So it's a lot easier to get from our admin to viewing in our main website. If we'll go back to our root view and we'll add a new task, then it automatically redirects properly to the new task that we created. And then finally, let's go ahead and edit our template to use task.getAbsoluteURL and then open it back up in our browser and there we go, we have all of our URLs still work just fine. And our code is a little more maintainable and easier to use. There are other parts of Django that uses getAbsoluteURL by default and so it's a good idea for your objects to use them when they can along with a lot of other third-party applications that will use GetAbsoluteURL as well.